started. Welcome to the Pauline Stockhausen Show. I am going to tell you all my tips and tricks on how to build your online community. I would like to welcome Joel. He is my co-host at the moment and we're just about to get started. So when you are thinking about going online and building either your community or your business page, you really need to start thinking about what you're passionate about. So one of the, everything stems from passion. What, what you're passionate about, what being in business and why are you in business? Because everything you do after that is affected. Do you agree, Joel? Yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean, what's an example for you? Like, what are you passionate about that drives you to do this? Well, my particular passion is about just helping people and getting people to their end goal. So, and, and then getting them online and making sure that they're doing the right sort of thing. So that's what I'm passionate about. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So working on your why, and then you can work on your who. So this, I really struggled with this for a long time. You might've heard in the past, you know, everyone talking about who is your avatar, who is your target market. And I fought this for so long. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm so not going to do that. But what I realized afterwards was that um, you, you have to do that because then you can understand who you're talking to. So for me, I have about four avatars that I use, but I pretty much only use two the most. And I, my avatars, are one's a woman, one's a man, um, and they're all different ages. So my four is a young, you know, young to middle to older. And what I do is, what I've done is written down everything about that person, what, how they think, how they dress, what movies they like, uh, where they like to hang out, what food they like, what magazines they buy, um, who their friends are, are they animal people or are they not? And when you break that down, you can really understand how to talk to them online. You can capture the conversation or the words that you use to help you uh, reach into their computer. And so they're thinking, oh, my God, she must be talking about me. Do, do you see what I mean? Yeah, that totally makes sense. It, uh, and it, it reminds me of yeah go ahead no no you go i was gonna say it reminds me of something which was recommended to me when i do my uh, videos and that's to put a little photo up on the camera so that i don't just talk to it like it's a robot and actually pretend like i'm talking to a real person and it sounds like what you're talking about is doing the same breaking down yeah. Like having a photo but then on the back of it i could have like all those things that you talked about you know that person's interests and what they're into and their you know yeah or that to make them a real person so you feel like you're having a proper conversation because it changes That's your right. tone like on my videos like i could i can tell my voice goes to this annoying kind of teachy tone when i'm not connecting with the actual person whereas yeah. if i think i'm actually talking to somebody it changes my tone and i imagine in social media it's the same kind yep. of thing your advertising or yep. your marketing can take on a different tone yeah and it's all the words you use I mean, the words that you use are really important. It's almost like having a conversation. So you'll see on social media, it's all a lot of people just trying to sell, 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 sell. Whereas mm -hmm. I teach how to have an ongoing conversation so that um, it's almost like letting the person into the door, you know, let them in. So they feel like you're connecting with them. And that's kind of powerful mm -hmm. stuff. I remember you telling me off about that when you were giving me some advice. <laughs> I was always wanting to just sell to the people rather than just have a conversation with them. And yeah. when I think about it, I actually much it, prefer that as a stance, you know, that we're just having a conversation yeah. with some people. And if I've got some things that might be helpful for you, then that'll come up in our conversation. That's right. And the thing we're doing, the avatars, what really works is you'll find you attract people who are interested in the same things as you. So, um, you know, and so that's why you've got to be really clear on what you're passionate about and what you're, what you're doing because you automatically attract those type of people into your life and you can do that through social media. And I mean, in everyday life, obviously. So I, I attract a lot of people who wear Converse because I wear Converse shoes. So I've got a tribe of little people who, <laughs> you know, with a Converse tribe. Um, 
because we talk about that and it's the same with Star Wars you know I'm really big on Star Wars and so I have a lot of people sending me Star Wars stuff that I might not have seen or I've seen a thousand times in this this do you know what I mean you sort of build that everyone builds a like a tribe together and you're all connected because of what you love to do yeah that totally makes sense and if you don't I suppose put yourself out there in a way that communicates who you are you won't draw those kind of people and you might end up attracting the wrong kind of people to your business maybe end up with the wrong kind of customers would that be right yep Yeah. yeah absolutely or just people who won't stay on your page because it's not you're not connecting with them you know, they've just seen the same sort of posts coming out over and over again and it's boring, you know, because you're just saying the same thing in five different ways, you know, like selling. Like a lot of people sell online and it's all just sales, 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 but you don't let the people who are following you get in behind the door, you know, get to really know who you are and that's where you build loyalty and friendships. And I mean, a lot of my customers uh, have become friends you know, and, and we trust each other and we um, collaborate now because I've let them in. Do you know what I mean? That makes sense, yeah. All right. So one of the other thing is finding your passion and then start telling your story. So humans love to connect with other humans and we connect because we uh, love to tell stories, we love to listen to stories, and we love to feel like we know where you're, where you're coming from. So, and you're moving away. Where are you going? No. <laughs> no. So, um, so, you know, tell your story or figure out what's the story you want to tell. I mean, obviously, I'm not t- talking about how you broke your leg when you're 11 and it was a traumatic deal, unless you want to tell that story. But I do have a good you know, tell... leg, traumatic story, but go on. Uh, me too, but. I broke my sister's leg, oh, but we won't good. we won't talk about no, that. Don't get distracted. So um, I'll tell your story. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, tell tell your story and uh, figure out what the story is you want to tell. You know, what's your journey? What's your business journey? And how is that going to attract people into your business? Or you because everyone's that? attracted to someone's journey. Hmm? So we're attracted what? to these stories, but how do you decide which stories to tell? And yeah, that's the first question. So, yeah, that that's really finding. You've got to think about your long term game as well. So, where and where do you? Where's your business in ten years? What are you trying to achieve? So, it's not because you've got to think about the long game. So, once you've worked out your long game, then you can work out what story you're going to tell, or um, in different circumstances. Like, for instance, you're going to start up an online course. So you're going to tell your story that's going to help within the online course and how to get people in. So it could be, um, you know, some little stories within your life that sort of help that. No, that didn't make sense at all. No, it makes total sense, but I'd <laughs> love an example. Help, help me find, help me find one for my for something. Just as an example, it's always helpful to have an example for you. Yeah. For you. Well, I mean, it's just picking out. It's picking out your essence. I don't know if that's the right word. But, you know, like your story is, um, well, I don't know, but when I think of you, you know, you've got a sore back, you're, you're, you're trying to save the world, train one person at a time, you love to, you know, um, surf. You know, those things all work in with your story. You're not just one-dimensional. Mm. And Joel... You've got all this other stuff and, you you know, the fact that you've got a sore back doesn't stop you from trying to, you know, live your life. So that's a part of your story that you can tell. Mm. So how would I tell that? So when you say tell your story, what does that mean? I mean, I assume you don't mean go and complain online about my sore back. Um, no. You? Or... So, <clears throat> no, you break that down into your content tree. So that's like another step. Once you've worked out your story... Mm. Then you've got to break it down into content. How are you going to share this story? Mm. So, I mean, that's visuals. That's, you know, making sure that the things that you're doing, you are sharing. Like the fact that you went to Raglan last week, not on the weekend, mm. um, you know, and you are talking about the fact that you went to Raglan and you went surfing and the train little place that you stayed in. Mm. You know, that's all building a picture mm. to who you are. So that's what you need to do online is build that picture 
with visuals. So depending on what you're trying to achieve, like I tell clients, so if, for example, if clients have an event coming up, you know, they don't just post the event two weeks before and just slam, this event's coming, da 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 You actually do it a few months ahead and help your tribe or the people who follow you see the picture behind the scenes coming up to the event. So that could be, you know, photographs of the planning stage with the staff to um, early videos and photography to coming up to the event. Because then what happens is people come into the journey and then they start getting attracted to what's going on. They get to know you more and they get, become interested in the journey that you're going on and they're more likely to come to the event as well if they've been invited or, you know, or if it's a market day or something like that. That reminds me a bit of um, conversations that I used to have with my wife when I didn't do them so well, when I used to just yeah. come out with some idea and be like, hey, let's do this or let's buy that or let's sell that and just come out with kind of the destination part of the conversation. Yeah. And I had to learn to bring her along on my thought process before that. It's like, oh, yeah. I was thinking about this and I was thinking about this and doing this bit. And at the end of that, perhaps we should do this. It sounds like a little yeah. bit like you take taking people, you know, on the journey with us before we get to the destination and kind of, yeah, that build up. So yeah. When it comes yeah. To the, uh, oh, and now it's all on. They've been a part of yeah. the story. So I sort of say it like um, it's dropping pebbles into the lake to cr create ripples. So you're creating those ripples before the big event at the end. You know, that's how I sort of, you know, explain it to clients. Yeah. So so if you have an event or something coming up and you are wanting to create a story around that, work it out, work backwards. So big things that are happening, like, um, you know, things that have been delivered, you know, so you're, you're creating a visual story around certain things. So that, that works out really well. And what happens is if you've done your avatar, you know, you're attracting those people with those visuals, you know. So um, once we've sorted out our target market, then you've got to work out where your audience is sitting. So I'm not... Um, I'm not the type of social strategist, social media strategist that tells you to go on every single platform. I'm more strategic where we do one and do one well, um, depending where your audience is sitting. So, I mean, Facebook obviously is still the big player. Uh, so Facebook is a definite jump on there because that's where everyone is really sitting. But then there's other platforms that might suit you better. So Instagram, depending on what type of business you have, you know, there's Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Lab. and the other Snapchat. Snapchat is pretty big, getting pretty big as well. So it's working out where your audience is sitting. So once you've worked out who your audience is, um, do a little bit of, uh, depending if you've got a, a brick and mortar store or, you know, ask the customers who you already have coming through your business, where, where are they? How many times are they on Facebook a day or do they only use Instagram? Or are they, you know, do they love Twitter? Or do they do a lot of business on LinkedIn? You know, so do a little bit of research and find out where your customers are sitting. Because they are really different, eh? Like, different people yep. and different demographics are found in completely different circles. I've got um, a few different circles of friends um, at different ages and only probably about six years difference. And then there's another yep. few people who are another five years difference. And it's like, there's a whole bunch of them who are just, I mean, all us, we use, you know, the Google chat stuff and that's the way we communicate and interact. Then there's the next group and they're not even on the Google chat stuff. They're on Facebook. That's the main thing. And then there's this other group and they're all on Snapchat. Um, and yeah. most of them aren't on Twitter at all. Twitter's not their thing. Yeah. So it, yeah. I can see how it's totally different and you've got to figure out your tribe. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also think about your end game as well, depending on where you, what you want to achieve. You know, Twitter, I mean, I use Twitter a lot. I mean, I love Twitter, but I use it a lot to connect to the right people that I want in my end game. Does that mm. make sense? Well, so it's part of my ruler of the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, 
for media purposes, obviously all the journalists are on their PR companies. Yeah. Um, the companies that I might be interested in for sponsorship. So that's why I use Twitter is to connect to the right people who maybe I want to bring in for certain things or highlight certain clients, you know. So I struck up conversations and build a relationship with them for that longer game because you can't sort of do that on Facebook as much mm. um, because they're all on Twitter and they're all searching. Mm. I also use Twitter for search search engine find out where people are sitting what they're talking about what the trends are uh, and that helps me build my content for my particular business and for some of my clients as well you know what's what's hitting the news what's you know getting shared the most you know so i use twitter that way so uh facebook is definitely the big player and then you can go down depending on what type of business each business is different so don't take my advice as an overall, you have to be everywhere. You could be B2B and LinkedIn could be one of your strengths. Um, LinkedIn for one of my clients is a no-brainer and she kills it on LinkedIn. So uh, more so than Facebook, you know. So it depends on the type of people you're trying to build up, build in. Um Once you've worked all that out where you need to be, then it starts – time to start thinking about your content because your content whatever platform you're on you're going to have to have a lot of content so each content has to be I believe in not having content one place and putting it out to all platforms you know each platform has different audiences so it's different conversations it's different language so while you can have one piece of content you can repurpose it for um, you know from Facebook to LinkedIn um, and then for Twitter, you know, or Instagram. So it could be the same piece of content, but you've got to redesign it for and repurpose it for each platform. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. And I remember you telling me off for having my Facebook and Twitter account linked up. And whenever linked. I put something on my Facebook, it'll end up on Twitter and it could end up truncated and looking silly. And after that, yeah. I had a friend of mine who I follow on Twitter and he was he has the same situation and something he put up there totally didn't make any sense so i had to hassle him about it just because you'd hassled me yeah and i was like dude what yeah are you i talking mean about because it makes no sense when it just kind of pushes out yeah yeah oh i mean each platform has different um rules of engagement mm -hmm. so i mean facebook there's a long lag time for facebook people will scroll back a few hours and see what's going on Within Twitter, you know, it's really the now, you know, and it's a conversation. So if you've linked your Facebook to Twitter, you know, people won't follow you because you're not there. It's obvious you're not there, you know, because it will have the um, Facebook tag to it. And it's also almost like, well, I'm not going to follow you because I know you're not there, so you can't engage with me. So, um, you know, you're sort of ripping off your audience a little bit. So I would unconnect them and then work out your strategy for Twitter and then work it out for Facebook. And Facebook, you know, uh, Twitter, sorry, is really engaging, having conversations and building that relationship, you know, so much more than, you know, Facebook. You can do with Facebook. Yeah, I found that when I jumped on Twitter properly, and to be fair, I've actually still got mine linked. It's a bit naughty. But when I jumped on it <laughs> properly, I... <laughs> um, I Fix it. I um, really enjoyed jumping on and having some conversations with people, but I also noticed that it took a lot of time and I was a bit resistant to staying yeah. that engaged and I haven't figured out yet how to weave that into my personal strategy and perhaps should just unlink them for now. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know how to deal with that challenge of, you know, it can, they're all sinkholes for as much time as I want to put into them. Um, and I want to yeah. have conversations with people who I might be able to, help but i you know i can't do that all day i've got to spend some time creating content and actually with my product you know yeah so i mean that's i mean it's the same with me being busy so i just have a schedule where um i go in early in the morning and i go in at late at night you know when i'm relaxing that's a time that i sort of think okay well i could jump in some conversations check out um what's going on now, I mean, I follow a lot of people, I think about 3,000. So my news feed is really cluttered. But what I do is, um, and which is really powerful, is I list people into lists. So 
I don't actually have to scroll through my news feed. I can just look at my list. And one of my most important lists is the people I know. So I spend a lot of time in that list um, talking to the people that I've already met um, and engaging with them and trying to build stronger relationships with the people I already know. And then I'll have like a PR and a media list. And so, and some of these, the lists you can hide as well. So you don't have to have it out in the open. Um, And that's how I sort of play on uh, Twitter. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what else? If you guys are, who are in the room, if you have any questions, please just put them in the um, comments bar. I'd love to answer. Um, <laughs> for a friend. Remind me how to disconnect Twitter from Facebook. Maybe I should. Do okay, it so right if you now. connected it through Facebook, you've got to do it through the Facebook settings. I can't actually remember. So I'm going to try and do it right now. And if I when I figure it out, I'll tell you. How's that? Or it's in Facebook uh, and Twitter at the bottom, unconnected um, in your settings. Um, Now, once you've started to build a tribe, the most important thing is to look after the people that have come in who are constantly engaging with you and liking your posts and things like that. Now, a lot of businesses and people just don't pay enough attention to actually looking after the people that they have attracted in. And that's where most of my business comes from. Those people that I've taken the time to engage with further or taken the conversation in private message are the people who will always purchase from from me um, and be loyal till the cows come home, really. Um, And then what I do is I merge people over to my email list and I've been successful in building my email list. I think we just hit 28,000 on Friday. So... I've been working pretty hard at building my email list and I spend a lot of my time more in my email list um, than I do on my social media because those conversations are way more important uh, and personal than the ones that I have online. So I sort of, my strategy is to move people over to my email list, offer great content on my email list and then building up conversations and giving advice. And so I do a lot of giving advice through my email. And that is way more powerful than my social media. Like I could put out, um, I could sell something today and I could pretty much get about 60 to 70% sales just from my email list because I've built the trust. I I know who people are. I've taken the time to get to know them. It, It does take a lot of time, you know, like I check out their social media, make sure I'm following them, engaging on their posts. So I have a list in my Twitter just for my email list subscribers so that I can keep nurturing those relationships a lot more. How's that? Any adv- any questions, anyone? Or um, I was going to ask something about your emails. Um, yep. How often do you email your email list? Um, I mean, I so like I... emails from people about stuff that I'm interested in, but I don't, no one likes a spammer, right? So how do you get that balance right? Yeah. So that's taken me a long time to figure it out. It used to be weekly and then I went monthly, but monthly was too long. So now I go fortnightly. Oh, wow. So I send it every two weeks and that gives me two weeks to build really good content as well. Weekly is too much because I'm also managing the clients that I have and I'm often photographing clients and building their content. So building my own content takes time and to make sure that I've got the right content for them. So two weeks for me is perfect. I get a a bigger open rate with two weeks, but it's real trial and error with your audience. You've got to figure out, but definitely once a month was too long. Um, I, um, I would have thought that was way too short. Um, and maybe it would be for my people, but um, that's really interesting to hear. Um, and it'd be interesting to figure mm-hmm. out how I can test my one without spamming everybody and bothering them. But I'd like to try a shorter interval and see how well that works. Oh, well, what I did was I asked, I asked them, I did a poll within my cool. email and said, look, um, I'm changing up my email list. I really want to make sure that I'm not flooding you. What do you like? What do you want? And basically everyone came back pretty much. I think 86% said fortnightly, so which was perfect for me because I was just like, okay, that's great. I can manage that within my time frame. 
Um, I do videos in my email list as well. So it's basically me and I have a question and answer as well. So people send me questions uh, for me to answer and I'll answer with video while mentioning them. Um, and that, that gets a big hit rate as well with right. my email list. And the other thing about my email list, what was I going to say about that? Content. Oh, it's gone. But so this is just a silly technical question, but both, yep. being, um, I think you use MailChimp, is that right? I do, yeah. And so I've never put a video into MailChimp before. Is that like a YouTube link or is it? Um, yeah. It is. Yeah, it's embedded in the, yeah. It's not hard. Oh. MailChimp has uh, questions, answers for everything. They're really good at um, helping you achieve what you need to achieve. So there's video and tutorials. Oh, awesome. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Oh, good work. Um, oh, my email list. Don't make it too long. So, um, you know, remember your followers are really busy. If you, my particular tribe, uh -huh uh really busy they can't read long posts um they go on forever so i make mine short and sweet and to the point uh because the moment you start writing a novel they'll read two paragraphs look down and go oh i don't have time for that uh, and then they won't click on to things so uh, make it short and sweet so i have it half a page like yeah. i don't know but well you know because a lot of my subscribers read it through email uh, on their phone. So they read it on their phone. So you know they're busy when they're reading it on their phone. So keep it short and sweet and to the point and then drive them to, you know, your Facebook page for other things that, you know, you'll be talking about through the week. So like I, I do a heads up on stuff that I'm going to be putting out through the week. Um, and that reminds them if they haven't liked or engaged on my page, for a while to click over and see what the latest stuff is going on so that's really how i do that yeah i like um, as well it also takes a bit of pressure off creating all the content boil it down yeah and, and the, it's, one, it's the same one with your content as well yeah it's the same with your facebook page you know don't write screeds and screeds of stuff in your facebook post because people just don't have time you know they're either catching it in their break when they should actually be working um, so just make it short and sweet, maybe with a visual. So, I mean, that's how I, I do everything. And, um, because if you do lots of long posts, then that's how they, they don't read them, you know, and really you want people to read them as well. Um, one of the big things that I did and what I'm really well known for, um, in New Zealand, I don't know, can I say the whole country is groups. So I have. I have been a massive supporter of Facebook groups since we got them that many, many years ago and built up massive communities on there. And um, back then, no one paid attention to the groups. Everyone was just like, Neh. you know, no, no, it's the business pages. But actually, the power is in the groups. You know, so either now people are clicking on how powerful the groups are. But uh, you either make your own group and get people to come in your tribe to the group or now that there's so many other groups out there, you jump into those groups to build the relationships within those groups. Um, engage with the, the admins of the group. Find out what content they're looking for. Find out what they need and uh, work out, you know, how to build a relationship with them so that you can engage with their audience. I mean, the groups are really powerful and people don't pay enough attention to how powerful they are. So I'd put content out in the groups, um, engage with people, and then, you know, they naturally come find you on other social media platforms or they um, engage with you on your Facebook page. So when you talk about groups, um, do you mean, I assume you mean topic-specific groups. So, I mean, I'm a... I'm a counselor and I do online training and that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't have a counseling group, but I might have a group about anger or empathy or relationships or yeah. What, what do you mean by, yeah. How would you go with topics around? Yeah. What well, would my for your, be? for your particular, 
If you're trying to build your tribe, I would go for location groups for you. Find the, go jump into all the location groups because when you, uh, for your particular customer, like if I was a customer, I wouldn't go to a group for that because I'm not broken. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But if okay. you're in a location group um, and giving advice within the group, then I would see that and think, oh, you know, he's talking to me and then, you know, track your audience that way. Okay, so that makes sense. Because yours is a little right. so that, different. At the moment, my focus is not trying to get more counselling clients, though, but more around um, getting more people interested in topic-specific stuff for my online content. Yeah. Um, would it be the same way for that or would, yeah, what would you recommend for that? Yeah, I definitely think you to get your particular client, I would go into location groups or yeah. topic groups, but not topic to what your your topic is. So, um, you know, like maybe a surfing group if you wanted to talk about anger. I don't know. Okay. You know, and then just ask questions. You know, look, I'm doing some research on da 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 does anyone have advice on da 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 you know you can attract people to your um pages by um you know filling them out with content other ways mm -hmm. instead of yeah i think you're a little bit different than most other businesses you know i wouldn't i personally wouldn't go into an anger group yeah, or no, it makes sense yeah um, and so maybe you want to attract a good people. example for that it might be nice to have someone else in us with some <laughs> examples that we could um yeah to, to use but it's, it's one thing actually i've struggled with with um, my business is how to market it you know previously i had a security company selling house alarms and you know i, I could figure out how to do that i did door-to-door -door sales and train sales people and i could sell alarms but selling a company yeah. service and um you know mental health courses is a whole different game for me so um yeah, yeah. but i'm sure other people I have would... got tricky things that they're trying to market as well so it's really good hearing you know that the other angle like you're really relational like you're like go and talk yep. to people in your surfing group because people can relate with yep. you about surfing and then just have yep. a conversation about anger or relationships and yeah. that's really yeah it's really cool hearing because it's kind of more natural just to kind of have a conversation with people that you just normally talk with about other stuff yeah um it feels less forced um yeah you make social media sound easier to me um, in a way, when, <laughs> yeah. when it comes back to just being about relationships and having uh, conversations with yeah. people, right? Yeah, well, that's definitely what it is. I mean, one of the things I think you should do is write some blogs about certain things and then have those um, ready and available if someone's asking a question in a group. Like if you were, um, you know, talking to about, about mothers, about how to teach their children about anger, um, you could have that ready and say, hey, look, this is something I wrote when they've already struck up a conversation. You know, look, my child is really angry all the time and I don't understand or I don't know how to fix that. Mm. You know, you could have something in your um, blogs uh, categories that you can say, hey, this is something I wrote. I know it's helped a lot of people. Um, I hope it helps. And if you have any questions, just, you know, send me a private message and, you know, I'll see if I can help in any way. You know, that's building a relationship with them and that really helps. So I have a conversation with somebody and then if a topic comes up and I've got resources up my sleeve, I can connect them with, like the blog. Yeah. Um, yeah. They can just go and have a look and see if it's yeah. helpful. And yeah. Or you just give them the link and say, hey, this is something I wrote that's helped a lot of people. It might help you, hmm. you know, and just offer your help. And that, I mean, that just, you know, they will either take it up or they won't. But pretty much if they're looking for something, they will take you up on it, mm. you know, because they're looking for an answer. Yeah. And it's easy to follow yeah. a link. I mean, it's one of the great things about the internet and having conversations with our customers yeah. on the internet is, you know, here's a link, they click, they go and have a read. And they've been given yeah, but you have to build up trust as well because what, what's happening now is a lot of people are just chucking in links and groups. Mm. And if you belong to a lot of group, you can see them do it. You know, they're just like dump, 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 dump. So they won't have the uptake that you you would expect if they hadn't done the work to build loyalty within the group. So 
you're giving content in the group for free. You know, look, I've seen this. I mean, location groups are great because you can build up um, authority in the area and the stuff that you do within the location group. And that can help propel you to get to where you want to go in other groups. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I can, you know, I like the idea of having my, I suppose I've got this fantasy around my online content and that I can sell it to the whole world. But then when I think about it, you know, my Hibiscus Coast group and page, so many people know me on there. You know, I've got so yeah. much, you know, if I go post something, a bunch of people will like it and say, thanks, Joel. And Joel's yeah. great at this. Because I do have a reputation yeah. there and I'm known there. So yeah. while I've got this fantasy about being able to sell to so many people around the whole world, maybe, yeah, I suppose I like that encouragement to go and stay in my community. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, build up in your community first. I mean, that's what I did. I mean, with the Hibiscus Coast Group, um, you know, starting that group was real. One of the best things they ever did because... But the thing is, I'm passionate about my community. I love where I live. I love every, you know, everyone in it, and I love the businesses. So it was a natural thing for me to do, and it taught me a lot of uh, lessons. I mean, basically, that propelled my business because I learned how people interact, interacted. I learned what they would accept and what they wouldn't accept. I learned about rules, um, you know, and that show taught me how to build up my next group and then my business group and um those sort of interactions are powerful because at the end of the day it's all communication and it's all human to human so um if any aliens are here you know yeah. hook us up <laughs> but do you know what i mean people just want to be heard yeah. and people just want to um be validated so if you are constantly doing that um, on social media and building people up, they're naturally going to be attracted to you and what you're doing, you know. Thanks for the share, so, Look at that, telling your friends. And hello to... Thank is it, you. Is it Natalie? I wasn't sure how to say your name. From the Netherlands. So, oh, yeah. Hi, Natalie. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're talking about building um, tribes. And if you have any questions... Uh, please feel free to ask. Um, we've already gone through um, how to build your audience, um, your avatars, talking about um, groups, um, the power of Twitter, uh, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We've got a few new people who have joined us, so welcome. Uh, Joel is from New Insight Counseling. He is amazing. He's almost like my my little best friend, my ginger oh. little best friend <laughs> online. Oh. Yep. No, okay, big. Okay. Uh, yeah, hey guys, it is great. Um, it is fun connecting. I like someone said that. And it's one of the things I really enjoy about Pauline's approach to social media is it's the emphasis just on connecting with people. And um, it's been really good for me. I mean, one of the reasons I got out of business back in the day is I started to see people as machines. And you know, I got into counseling, which is obviously a really different, it's very much about the human. And um, it's just really refreshing to talk about social media and marketing with a massive emphasis just on having conversations with people. Um, mm -hmm. So I really like that. And yes, uh, we talked about NBC before. Sorry, I forgot that. And yes, we did. And that was fun. Ah, oh, like you get a little fan base oh, I there. Love NBC <laughs> friends. It's one of my favorite things. It's such a cool way to connect. Anyway. And, that, and that's another reason why I love Blab, you know, because I love Twitter and Blab is like that next step, step up, you know, building those relationships or really getting to know the people who follow me on Twitter on a deeper level. And that's what that's why I decided to start the Stockhausen show um, and interview my peers and how they got in business and um, give value, you know. Hmm. So. Yeah, I do really enjoy how um, you actually get to – connect with people in a whole different way on this personally i um, yeah i really enjoy i suppose i'm quite intuitive around connecting with people around seeing their faces and their eyes and yeah um i actually get to do that on this which is which is cool it's another yeah. level instead of just yeah that's definitely what i love as well so um it's a bit of a jury day i don't know where everyone's from but we're from new zealand and we've had some beautiful days last week but today it's pouring with rain mm. and it's it's not that nice out, so I thankfully... Like it. It's all straight down rain. It's beautiful, and I can hear it on yeah. my, my wooden ceiling. 
You don't like it though? Yeah, no, it's it's loud at my house. Far out. Um, oh, I'm too quiet on here, am I? Yeah, sure. Oh. Sorry about that. So if there's any more questions, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I'm happy to answer anything if you've got any. Um, uh, what else? I talked about the power of groups, um, building your content. Oh, okay. I'll give you one of the tricks that I use for my clients in building content. Um, I break everything down in bite-sized chunks. So uh, things like I have headings in a strategy that I like to use, and they work really well. So one is motivate. So how to motivate your audience. How to inspire is another one. How to inspire your audience. Um, education. So how you can educate your audience on what you do. Um, what's another one? Entertainment. Entertainment is another category that I use. So that could be anything from things that are going on in your community to things that are going on in the world um, that you can put content out that goes with your content tree. Um, what else is there? There's a question on I didn't write them. about time. Yeah. Um, how do you allocate to build your online community? Oh, that's a good Content, question. Community management, etc. And I want to learn how well, to get that question and put it over on the other side there in the little questions thing because that'd be cool. Oh, anyway. I think I have to click here. Oh no, she hasn't used the slash Q. That's why. Okay, oh, how much yeah. time? For me, seven years and many, many hours. So, uh, if you're playing the long game, it doesn't matter how much time. So maybe an hour a day um, to, it depends on what type of business. If you can tell me the business that you have, then I can give you a general idea. Um, what I sort of teach my clients is throughout the week, they have um, building content days where it could be snapping a photo or um, thoughts and stuff like that. So they put it in a Dropbox file where we collaborate together and then I help them break it down into a content tree. And they, they can be like, so little snippets of five minutes here and there. Um, and then we work into sending stuff to the graphics. It depends on uh, the, you know, which type of client it is, if it's a high client to a low medium client. But me personally, I probably spend um, a lot of time on my content because I am in social media so I'm doing videos I'm doing a show um, but some of my clients spend between five five hours a week maybe uh, building their content and then scheduling it up and then spending time to engage so yeah it depends on how fast you want to roll and how fast you want to grow you know, if you're really serious of making social media your massive driver of um, customers to sales, then you're going to, the more time you spend, the better you are to to build your audience. Does, some, does that help? Are there some thresholds? Like if you don't get on Facebook once a day, you're wasting your time. Or are there some thresholds like that? Like sometimes I abandon yeah. Facebook and all that stuff for, two or three weeks when I get busy, is that quite bad? Um, yeah. Or can you kind of, is it just like, well, if you, that happens because you're busy, it happens. doesn't really matter. You come back and you engage, say hello to people, say, sorry, I've been away, I've been busy. Well, that's the thing. You've got to understand the Facebook algorithm um, is all on engagement. So if you've been quiet for a while, you've lost your audience. So they don't, you don't come up into their feed anymore. So what you have to do is, you have to plan ahead and if you know you're going to be away, put out some posts or some questions that you know your audience is going to engage in because the whole game is the more they engage, the more people see your content. So, you know, if you do let it lapse, you've almost got to start over and get come up with ways to get people to re-like or re-engage on the page. So uh, definitely try to keep, going in like once a day or having a thought or having a link to something or asking a question or having a visual uh, just to keep that fresh because the moment you drop off it's really hard to get that audience back mm -hmm. once they've dropped out of the algorithm so you do kind of lose momentum um if you're out. Yeah. yeah okay that's really yeah i mean 
think of it like, um, you know, your personal Facebook page, you know, you've probably followed friends from school, you know, and you haven't engaged on their posts in a long time. So you probably don't even see their posts. Like sometimes I think, oh, I wonder how she's doing. I haven't seen anything from her. Well, she's posted every day for the last six weeks, but I've seen nothing because I haven't engaged. So I'll go in um, and it's called um, know, stalking or something. It's called something else, but I won't use that word, uh, where you just like everything. So I'll go in and if I haven't seen someone for a while, I'll like everything and comment. So I'm sort of telling Facebook, this person is important to me. So, um, you know, put them back in the algorithm. And then sure enough, a few days later, they start popping up again. Well, that's really interesting. Consistency is key. That's right. All right, so if we have any more questions, otherwise I'm going to stop our recording and then we can go into the after show. And if anyone wants to jump in and have a chat, that would be great for like 15 to 20 minutes before my next meeting. That would be awesome. So once again, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. Uh, this is my weekly show called The Stockhausen Show. I love having Joel with me because he just helps me you know, sort my shit out. I do what I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're great. You're great at that. Um, if anyone has any questions or want me to talk about something in particular on my next show, please send me a message. Um, follow me on Twitter, which is my Twitter name is Stockhausen's, or um, jump onto my website, which is PaulineStockhausen.com, or my Facebook page, uh, Pauline Stockhausen. If you want to add me as a friend, uh, go for it. I don't actually add lots of people but i'm going to start changing that and i look forward to getting to meet you guys jump into my email list if you want and joel do you want to say something before we sign off um not not too much really just yeah i do uh, counseling and training and i've got a few online courses and you can find my website at newinsight.co.nz and if you look under learn now i've got some courses on um, suicide prevention and how to support a suicidal person and some courses on anger and on empathy and relational mindfulness and a course on beating burnout and a new <laughs> online course on how to get a job by networking um, which is about to be published so if you want to be in on the first kind of deals on that which I do when I do new courses then um, sign up to my email list and I'll get you the codes for that and i'll put a little link in awesome all right signing off and we'll see you next week